and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Grixis mid-range to kick off rotation proof Monday today. As y'all know, Monday's Intel rotation is where we make decks that are completely rotation proof, where we're only using uh, cards from the last four sets from Guilds of Ravnica forward because those are going to be the sets that will be legal in standard whenever Throne of Eldraine releases, which we now know is going to be September 26th for Arena. What's up, Hawkeye? Hawkeye is here to join uh, us as well. So I think the, the biggest challenge with these rotation-proof decks is honestly the mana base, because we don't get the check lands. So our mana our mana is pretty tough. We got three Dismal Backwaters. We got three Temple of Epiphanies. I got four Bloodfell Caves. These are not great lands to be playing, but we got to play them. And I also have a Lotus Field in here to have our to help us with the triple black with Nickel Bolas Dragon God. Um, we'll see. The, it's it's certainly possible this Lotus Field won't be very good, but I wanted to give it a try. Uh, I think like the more lands we have, the better the Lotus Field is. If we have like three lands or less, the Lotus Field will not be good. We really need to have four, five, six lands, and and in that. Like, whenever we have that, um, the Lotus Field will be pretty good for us. Um, and, of course, Lotus Field can give us, like, the double blue, double red, all that kind of stuff. So, as you can see here, I I think, like, with Grixis, I think you kind of want to focus on two colors, with, like, the third one being more of a splash. And we're focusing on red-black here, with blue kind of being a splash. Uh, the four mana, The four drop slot really takes a big hit with rotation. Uh, not having four mana Nicol Bolas, of course, is a, is a huge uh, blow to the deck. Um, but then also not having... Like, the other good four drops that we want to be playing are Hostage Taker and Rekindling Phoenix also, and those are leaving as well. So I'm going to try a couple of Chandra Fire Artisans in here. Chandra can also just kind of help us hit more land drops and everything too and, and help our fix our mana and everything. So we'll see how that works out. I have one Kefnet. The thing is, we don't have, like, a whole lot of spells for Kefnet to hit. You know, we just have, like, this pile over here. So with us playing, like, a good amount of creatures and Planeswalkers and lands, Kefnet won't always be um, hitting something. But we got the one in there. And also, I'd, I didn't really want double blue uh, in the deck too much. Um, I'm also going to try a Doom Whisper as well to kind of fill that, fill that uh, void of, like, the large creature. So we're going to try a Doom Whisper. Uh, Little Chandra can either pressure or recast any of these things. Little Chandra cannot recast Carnival or Bedeck because it adds th the double mana cost for both of those. Um, but besides that, I like Little Chandra. Uh, we got a Massacre Girl sideboard. <clears throat> you know, like regular old Grixis stuff. So let's see how this works. We'll see how like Fire Arson does, see how our mana base does, um, and everything like that. So these rotation proof decks, we're gonna play them through a league. See how many wins we can get. See if we can get to five wins before two losses. We don't always have like this like as many wins as we normally do. Whoops. Did I not just select this? Choose your deck. Not always with the rotation proof decks. Uh, because like the mana base really does hurt. Um, yeah, that's that really does hurt. And then there's like some cards, like Blood Sun, that you really want to be playing. Okay. So let's give this a try. <laughs> We're gonna get five wins, maybe six or seven. Let's go for eight. Well, this looks pretty decent. How we got the shock lands in here? The Dire Moon Vampire. Hmm. We don't really need to play Knight of the Ebon Legion on turn one. I'm gonna need another land. Yeah, we'll have to see what kind of lands the Throne of Eldraine gives us.
Um, yeah, it'll, that'll be interesting to see like what what the rare lands are and how that will incentivize deck building, whether or not they're better or worse. <clears throat> than temples. You know, like, if, if the temples are, like, the, the better of the two dual lands, like, maybe you want to build more closer to the shards that give you, like, two temples, or if the other lands are going to be better than temples, you can build decks based, you know, like, where you have two of the other, the Throne of Eldraine land. So, like, I guess what I'm talking about, if you don't really understand what I mean, is, like, the three-color combinations, if you think about them. Like, Grixis here has one temple. It has Temple of Epiphany. And honestly, that's, that's like, the worst temple to have whenever you really want black for Nicol Bolas. But, anyway, so the Throne of Eldraine land is better, or if those lands are better than the temples, then Grixis would be a good three-color combination to be at, because then you'd have the blue-black and the red-black of whatever those lands are. If... If it turns out that the temples are going to be better lands, and then like the the format is slowed down quite a bit because everybody's playing temples, uh, you know you'd want to be somewhere like Teamer, like where Teamer has the blue green and uh, blue red temple. You know, like that would be a better three color combination to be. So it'll be it's it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, it could just be that we get the five temples, the other five temples, and then uh, you know everybody's on this the same playing field, all of the three color combinations, but that's still to be seen. So it looks like mono black vampires or, you know, maybe just black, I mean, honestly, it could just be black white vampires, but they just drew swamp swamp. So I should probably be playing Legion's End, Masker Girl, Ritual of Soot, Bedeck. Um, Bedeck is my anti-Adanto Vanguard uh, tech. Probably want all this kind of stuff against vampires. That's 65, so that's five cards. Um, usually, War Boss isn't spectacular here. Chandra is pretty slow. Well, Noxious, I guess, yeah, we don't know if they're playing white or not, so we'll just take out Noxious Grasp just in case. And. I think I may just take out war bosses. Yeah, I'm just gonna take out war bosses. While we don't, while we don't know for sure, I am, um, I am assuming that the other, that the the five dual lands in Throne of Eldraine will be the opposite colors of the ones that were in M20. So I'm I'm assuming that we're gonna get whatever, like we have the five temples right now. I'm assuming the other five color pairs. So it's it's not just split up, allied or enemy because you have some of each in M20, right? Or are they all M enemy? I guess we got what blue green is enemy, blue red is enemy, black white is enemy, black green is enemy. Oh, maybe they are all enemy. What was the other one? I didn't say. Red, white. Yeah, that's enemy also. Okay, so it was all the enemy colors. Oh, for some reason in my mind, I was thinking it was split. What's up, Aegis Warren? Okay. What'd they play? Impassioned Orator? So, yeah, I guess it is all the enemy ones. So then we should be getting the allied colored, which are the other five color pairings. We should be getting those. Unfortunately, everything's too toughness for this Masker Girl. Hmm. 
Hmm. I did not stop this fight, but I will finish it. So I guess I'm just going to Carnage here. Make them discard these other two cards. Shocklands. All right. Well, obviously we have to kill Gideon's company. Awesome. Thanks, Chef. God's willing. That was a good draw. All right, so Masker Girl doesn't look very effective. Also, Noxious Grasp does look a lot better. <laughs> it's not really just vampires. Let's get that in. Let's take out Carnival. Um, this is 61 now. I kind of want to play War Bosses. Four Legion's End is probably too many. Should I play War Boss instead of Chandra, Fire Artisan? And Acolyte of Flame. No, we'll just go with this. What kind of control-ish deck here against the creature deck? <clears throat> uh, yeah, to tell when it's time to renew, if you click, like for, for Twitch Prime, uh, yeah, if you're using Twitch Prime, um, if you click on your logo in the top right-hand corner on Twitch, and then if you kind of go down, there's a, you know, like there's like options. There's one of them that says subscriptions and you click on that. Um, and it says like what your subscriptions are. Uh, you do just have to um, subscribe manually each time with, with Twitch Prime. It's not something that automatically renews. Um, so if, if you want to continue renewing, you have to do that each month yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. after that game one, I wasn't really expecting exactly what happened there. You're welcome. Well, our hand's pretty good. Unfo unfortunately, it looks like our opponent's mulliganing a bunch. Ugh. That's too bad. Don't have two blue. And I would like lands anyway to get to the, the dragon gods. Oh, awesome. PSI Bear, glad yeah, glad you're loving the Esper Mill deck. I liked that one I liked that one too. As you notice at the end of the video, I talked about like some things I would like to change with the deck. <clears throat> but those are just kind of little things. A 
Oh, hey, JF. JFS bird. Hope everything's going okay there at the hospital. This is one player has to lose four life, so it can't just be they lose three life and I lose two life. Um, I don't think I really need to shock, though, just to hold up the knight trigger. It doesn't seem like it. They knew they weren't blocking with Pride Mate, I suppose. We could kill our Dreadhorde Butcher um, to almost kill them, but we were just going to be taken up. So that's really unfortunate. Our opponent really only got to play one game. Game one and game three. They didn't they didn't do anything. And they they won the game, they played spells. But our hands were better in the other two games. <clears throat> like I think that game three there we good chance we would have beat their game two hand. problem with playing just a bunch of tap lands but this is where we are hello hmm so many options So Dreadhorde Butcher can like take out Pyromancer and take out something else. So I'm gonna actually go with the Thought Erasure here. Well then. A land that doesn't do damage to us. Let's keep it. Keep it fast. What's up, Rex? Thank you so much for that sub there. Three's a little awkward. Love it. Love y'all throwing out the Armada after our subs to show some uh, love there. Still gain some life. Awesome. Good thing I saved this Legion's End. 
All right, hit the land. Let's light it up. Did not hit the land. Might as well cast this though. To land, I'll take it. All right, so we're looking pretty good. We're still looking pretty good. Looking even better. <laughs> Ishikawa, hey, good evening. All right, we got this Ether Gust. Some more Legion's Ends. A Ritual, a Bedeck. I think I kind of want Ugin's. I don't know, maybe not. Basically, I don't mind duress. Basically, uh, Frenzy kills us. So that's why I was thinking, like, Ugin can get rid of Frenzy. You know, Warboss usually trades down for Shock, which is not great. Yeah, I mean, kind of same thing with Knight, though. So we have 66 pretty playable cards here. We get rid of this Chandra. Yeah, I definitely want to get rid of that. So now we're at 65. And I'm gonna cut like I'm gonna cut one thought erasure, maybe a second. Eh. I want a couple war bosses. Let's get rid of one dragon god. Let me get rid of two dragon gods. Play some more bosses. There we go. Let's do that. Hey, yeah, the exclamation point song thing. Um, huh, thanks, Moses. Uh, it, it takes like, you know, 20, 30 seconds. So it's like whenever you hit, whenever you type exclamation point song, then. Uh, Hey, what's up? Kendis with the sub. Thanks so much, Kendis. I really appreciate that. I have we'll get we'll get into it, you know, later whenever we're uh getting close to or like, you know, like before we play it, but I have a few questions about the elves deck. Um that like some some stuff that I think we should probably change before playing it, but we'll get into that later. All right, what you got over here? Lots of burn spells. Hmm. Yeah, Yachty, yeah, and also you can post it. There's probably people in the chat that'll help you out too. You can post your deck list and see if there's people in the chat that'll help you out too. Um, yeah, I'm a little busy with the, the streaming and everything right now. Lava Runner. Let's spry. Our hand's not looking very good. Good scry, good scry. No, not yet, Jaden. Hmm. 
wonder why Steamkin's not attacking there. Ditching Frenzy. Hmm. The whole of the multiverse will bend to my will. They just have the three lands and then the Lava Runner. So if they want to keep Lava Runner, they got to exile lands. We can start getting rid of these lands. Uh -huh. You have no weakness. Hopefully find destroy. anything to deal with this Lava Runner this turn where I don't have to use Nicol Bolas. Obviously Wizard's Lightning would be the worst possible thing for us to see. Shock is pretty close to the worst thing. Perfect. All right, this is real close. Please draw a spell. Please draw a spell. Draw a spell, but not not a one mana spell. A two or a two mana or more spell. Yay! So basically, what was going to happen there is then I would if they draw like anything that costs two, you know, I would thought erasure first, make them discard whatever they draw, and then take up nickel bolus, make them sacrifice their last land. Or exile, I guess. Exile their last land. And then land. Uh, <clears throat> and then land um, Kefnet. And then they're they're pretty done after that because they can only they draw one spell a turn, but whatever whatever they draw, they have to exile to Nicobola. So the, the game's over after that. So like really they had that one turn. The, the problem, yeah, Interplanar Bacon helps you cast Nicobolus, sure, but it doesn't cast all these other things. I have a lot of, like, you know, blue, black, and then, like, you know, Bedevil is, like, black, black, red, and, and it's just a colorless land for all these other spells, and I, we can't afford colorless lands. Hey, Shaf, thanks for the good luck. They had three lands at, at one point, our opponent did. But we exiled some of them. So I could definitely see them playing the uh, Leaf Can Druid here, and I want to Tyrant Scorn Leaf Can Druid untap War Boss. So by not playing in the Shock Land, it was going to cause me to spend a couple more life. But yuck, Field of the Dead. Yuck. Hey WQ, going really good. We got rotation proof Monday today. Looks like it's going pretty good for our opponent as well. But we're going to be casting Carnage this turn, unless we draw something better. Get rid of two of those cards. Mm -hmm. 
the elves deck is not the elves deck is a donation deck that's not part of rotation proof monday the other three are part of rotation proof monday though but elves is not uh they're yeah war of the spark and course at 2020 are very similar as far as like pack value you can basically go either way um so it kind of depends on depends on like what like what your collections looking like and what uh what cards you kind of want more but i mean either either one are good purchases i mean i guess m m20 is going to be more about the elementals but yeah either either one's good you'll have them both the exact same amount of time My phone's hand was amazing. I don't think we're winning this. Another crisis. Yeah, you have this game one. So each land drop is four zombies. Pretty fair. I need to draw another one of those Legion's Ends. Very impressive hand from our opponent. So we need more of those. We need those things. Um, Bedazzle's pretty slow. We saw there we didn't get to six mana until like, like they would have already had like the three field of the deads in play and everything. Either Gus can definitely slow them down, like countering Circuitous Route for a turn. Circuitous Route is a pretty messed up card. Um, I don't, I don't actually like Masker Girl. For this matchup.
No, get Bedevil back in here. Yeah, our four mana slot is really poor, and so I'm trying out Chandra's. This this may have been a board out Chandra matchup. Looks like the exact same start they had last time. They had Grow Spiral on two, the put in Field of the Dead, and then played Circuitous Route. And then start playing just tons of heavy hitters. So hopefully, I'm hoping no Circuitous Route, like that card speeds them up so much. Unfortunately, Dismal Backwater doesn't mean we get to play Dragon God here if there's, you know, like a 5-drop. Drake? Yeah, don't get to don't get to recast again. That that dismal backwater really hurt us there. Cause they scried that card to the top. Like the reason why they want to counter that with the Drake, because they scried the the card to the top. Whatever it was, it looks like it was a Masker Girl. Does that kill Kefnet? Yeah, it looks like it. Hmm. Again, your existence is pointless. This is pretty rough against, you know, like Golos or you know, they have like the five drop, like basically like Golos, that kind of thing. Um, Crisis is not as bad for us because we have Legion's End, but it's still, Crisis means more land drops, of course. Okay. Conceivable. My intellect is without limit. I 
do have a bunch of five drops. It's going to be really difficult to beat. I guess I'm going to have to say... Ugh. Gosh, the five drops are so hard to beat. Is a comma? That's random. Bunch of Sir, Sir Eulen Drakes. Unfortunately, don't have any removal for your rock, unfortunately. Is there any scenario where Zakama is actually better than Agent of Treachery? Because I can't think of any. It's like the... It's like the definition of overabundance. Those fields tough too. These these tap lands have just kind of been too tough for us. That's a couple of turns now. Living in a monastery full of firebrands? Fire spreads fast with help. <clears throat> couple of turns we're having tap lands have really hurt us. But oh well, no shame losing to this. Our opponent's deck, um, you know, does a great job of, you know, of going Your over the top of mid-range decks, and that's what they've done. Hey Dan. Your defiance is in my own smarted you eons ago. Find your fires of passion within. Oh, I forgot that I had an extra two mana. I forgot about Lotus Field. <laughs> I kinda did. Well, I could have I could have minus Chandra. To legions and these things and cast Doom Whisper.
Beating Field of the Dead is always tough without... Without Blood Sun. Remember that spell. But I guess Doom Whisper can end this game really quickly. I guess we're not I guess we're not out of this. So the question is, do you think when Blood Sun goes away that Field of the Dead decks will become too powerful? Um I don't think so because I think that because you know we don't know the cards from Throne of Eldraine yet, but I am I am very confident that there are going to be something you know, kind of similar to Bloodstone, but there's going to be um, at least one or multiple. I think there's going to be just multiple cards that are good against Field of the Dead or, or shut down Field of the Dead in Throne of Eldraine. Because I think from Wizard's perspective, what the heck? Um, a very bad scenario is... We have, we have rotation. We have a brand new set in the fall. Everybody's excited about it, and uh, want to play standard. And and you know people like there's definitely people that, that wait until rotation, and you know they come out to play standard, and then um, all all there is is just field of the dead decks everywhere. All right, I'm not. I guess I'm not going any lower. Just keep this. Yuck. That is not what Wizards wants at all. I think I might be. I think I out the deck. There's not a huge difference between three and five life in that scenario. It's not not much of a difference, but I was just more comf comfortable with five. I didn't think we we're gonna win that at all, but Doom Whisper helped get us there. Oh, I didn't have this this card in my deck. I was kind of looking for that card. I thought that was in my deck. Three mana Chandra was amazing. I guess I need to play Noxious Grass since they have Yurok and Cavalier of Thorns. Those cards are really difficult to beat. I guess that's kind of better than Tyrant Scorn, even though Tyrant Scorn can bounce Golos for like a turn or something. Awesome, collectibles. Glad you're liking uh, Sultai Treachery. Glad to hear. Play this instead of this Chandra also.
Well, if we are able to ego field of the dead, we have a shot. My favorite planeswalker. Good question. I don't know. There's a lot of them I like. There are quite a few that I like. Sir Eulen Drake does a perfect job of stopping on Mordigo for me, unfortunately. So we have to waste that Legion's End on the Drake so that we get to Ego. Yep. That was risky, or like that was. I was worried whenever they started playing a different land than what they drew, or like different land than one of those. Still have Zakama. All right, so one Golos. Two Golos, Agent of Treachery. That card's so much scarier than Zakama. Two Agent of Treacheries. All right, we're gonna have to like unmoor ego those or something. Let's get this in play. What's their win con now? Just all their creatures. They still have a ton of creatures. This creatures attack. If you ever see a creature in a deck, that's a win con. That's a it's a pretty common question people ask of like what are win like what's their win cons? Like they have a lot of creatures. They have Agent of Treachery, of course, which is really hard to beat, but you know, Risen Reefs and Goluses and Urox and Krasises. They have lots of win cons. So I'm glad that they grow spiraled on their own turn here. So I have more to choose from. Love it. That that agent treachery was probably on top that they just like found from the grow spiral, or if they don't, if they just wait on the grow spiral, then they get to draw it. Uh, no, I don't have any news about Throne of Eldraine spoilers. Um, yeah. Any day now, basically. It could be today's the holiday in the US, so maybe tomorrow. Ugh. They're drawing like fire, though. Last three draws Agent of Treachery, Golos, Krasis.
All right, so they, they're going to be getting a lot of cards a turn with this Arch of Orozca. Still need to be worried about this other Agent of Treachery that they got somewhere in their deck. Rejuvenator missed. That's a good sign for me. It means a lot of spells down to the bottom. Very likely that Thought Erasure misses here. I'm not going to be casting it. If it, if they did have a spell, then they would just sack this or Eulen Drake. Um, they still have two more Hydroid Krasis, so I think I kind of want to save it. Like, they ca they find a Krasis and cast a big Krasis again, then we can cast it afterwards. No, I mean, I, I think they just had a, like, is a... Decent shot that they just had like a a land in hand or something like that. Like something that like Thought Erasure was kind of a mess at that point. Hey, Jack back. Thanks to the Twitch Prime sub. That was a really nice spot for getting this Thought Erasure also. Race this Hydroid Crisis. Not likely. Gotta find removal. Hmm. Found their other Agent of Treachery. Agent of Treachery card is so good. Dead yet. Curiosity and wonder drives another. Your yeah, we are. Past is Never mind. I thought we had one more life than we did. Yep. They found all their big cards. They found both Agent Treacheries and the Zakama, but that's just what happens when you draw so many cards. As we see here, they're at like 18 cards left in library, and I'm at 42. <laughs> so.
So their deck goes way over the top. So they found all their good stuff. GG's. We put up a good fight. For having a you know a, a mana base that hurt us and for not having any blood suns. We put up a good fight. But Agent of Treachery is just too strong. That card is can't really stop that one. All right, two and one. All right, got to draw lands. Yeah, especially when you have mirror image and you're rock out. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, Sultai Treachery. That deck was a lot of fun yesterday, so... I know all about how mean that card can be. If we could have found another Ego, that was definitely the next card I was going to be naming was Agent of Treachery. We didn't have another one, though. Oh, that's brutal. Talked about this before, but you can't, like, Lotus Field, if you don't have, like, four lands is, is really rough. I mean... It's like if I if I play it here, which I guess I'm going to. Yeah, I guess we're just gonna play it. We have a lot of, you know, like two color, you know, multicolor cards that we can't cast with Lotus Field. But not really in our hand though. Our hand is kind of okay with Lotus Field. Yeah, it looks like our opponent's playing mono black control. So I approve. Probably Chandra. Could see Carnage though, also. Get rid of two of those. Dang, they had Swamp Swamp. Carnage does work pretty well with uh, Dragon God's tick up ability. You know, just Carnage just reduces resources. Hey, what's up, London? Bringing that hype. We do need to draw a red source before we can play Dragon God. Has to be red because we need. We need the lowest field for triple black. I was kind of expecting that card, so I didn't play Knight of the Oven Legion. Red source. I don't have very many untapped red lands. Uh, Lotus Field's so rough. I can't butcher and knight. I can do one or the other. Which I guess that means it's butcher. Would we be in a better spot if Lotus Field was just basic swamp? I mean, this game, probably. Yeah. It's 
treasure maps are going to be hard to outgrind uh, if we can't get Dragon God in play. Field of the Dead Divine Visitation. There you go. <laughs> Can't cast that. Oh yeah, I will not be upset if we lose to Mono Black Control. Y'all know how much I like that deck. I don't really... I can use any of them. Real Hurand. I don't really have like a, a preference. Or like a... Like it has to be this site. Most people just use MTG Goldfish. That one's really easy to use. For, for post and deckless. want a bedevil treasure map before it flips. Pretty sweet. I think my my opponent could just be using my mono black control list. Like all these cards are are in the deck. I hope so. That'd be really cool. We're putting up a fight with our two lands over here. Against the nine over there. that 10. See, normally I'd be playing cast down in this deck, but cast downs are rotating, so we have Tyrant Scorn. Um, if you want to play this deck and, and don't care about playing cards that are going to rotate out, I would recommend playing cast down over Tyrant Scorn. Alright, so the Scorns are dead. Legion's End. Dead, dead. Dead. Dead ish. Hmm. I guess I'm playing these egos. I guess, well, this thing, this thing kills Dread Presence. Okay. You're in there. I don't need three egos. All right. Our cards do stuff now. Uh, 
Okay. Thank you so much, Arand. Jeskai Drakes. Let's see if I can find that list. Okay, cool. Um, so does tomorrow work? I have one donation at deck for a second tomorrow. Could be any of the other slots though tomorrow. Yeah, we have lands. Hooray. Late? Okay, you want like the last slot? How two Ugans in hand? Okay, so there is. Yep. Sweet, this is my list. Awesome. So yeah, Ugin is just very good, very hard to beat. This is actually kind of good for our opponent, though, to cycle away like Ugans that, you know, they have two lands, they can't cast Ugin, so. You know, getting some other like land drops and everything, it's actually beneficial for them. That was a good draw. Yep, <laughs> three mana opponent gets to cycle away two dead cards. We dodged a bullet there. We don't we don't have any more basics in our deck. They would have feel to ruin the blood crypt. The immortal We would have been in trouble. Death's master. Alright, cool. Last slot tomorrow for Jeskai Drake. Alright, and now Dragon God takes over. Speaking of brutal cards, I have other schemes to attend to. <laughs> you have no weakness that I cannot exploit. So yeah, Dreadhorde Butcher dies to Cry the Carnarium, but honestly, I I would be happy with my opponent playing Cry the Carnarium the next turn because if they if they do, that means Dragon God stays around. Be more aggressive with that field of ruin. If you watch this later, White Staff, that's definitely should field of ruin there. I will return one day. Let your weak minds crumble. 
once, once. I am one again. All right, let me write this down. Jeskai Drake's fourth. Fourth tomorrow. Okay. Um. Is it better to play this as Carnage than play on Mordigo? Play this. Ego's just not very good. All right, yeah, we'll just play those. Hey, Ari. So, Kendis, have you ever played? Have you played that deck best of three before? It looks like it's a best of one deck, which like how it's built and everything. What's up, J Bowls? Because I think we need to make changes to like the sideboard and the mana base and stuff for best of three. But we'll we'll take care of that. Okay. Oh, it is best. Of, okay, it is best of one. Okay, I I just forgot that. Then I didn't write that down. Sorry. Okay, so it's best of one. Perfect. You're you're great. We'll yeah we'll play best of one. Yeah. No. No worries. Cause that's what. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Go trade with the Cry of the Carnarium. Let's do... My phone. Legion's End. Yeah, I should do some more best of one. A lot there's a big audience for best of one, I think. No, I yes, uh correct. I would not say that Ragdos Aristocrats is tier one. In my image. I have other plans. Witness a moat of my Hey, Bajonkers. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't prefer best of one myself, but it's still an option that a lot of people play for different reasons. Um, you know, maybe being newer to the game, maybe time constraints, um, all that kind of stuff. All right, well, our Grixis deck is, is working pretty well. Unfortunately, our mono black, mono black control opponent did not draw well that game three, unfortunately. Yeah, limited card pool, so that's why you play best of one. Makes sense. All right, need to send a message real quick.
Okay. Let's go aggro here on the play. Oh wait, I can't play Butcher next turn. Hmm. Okay, maybe I should've gone Temple. All right, get a little scry in. Because it's my turn, and I'll scry if I want to. Chess guy. Hmm. Just, just guy players like to play Deafening Clarion. I'm gonna have War Boss follow up. I was kind of planning on playing War Boss there. Double bacon. I will fight for Double serving of bake bacon. Oh, say hello to my little friends. What? Why are they minus here? Does that just kills their Karn? If they tick up, their Karn goes to one. If they minus the Karn dies, and they don't get a card. We're going to be playing Jeskai Drakes tomorrow. What know you of dragons? All right, we're going to have to find something to kill this dragon. Because otherwise the dragon's going to kill some of my little gobos. All right, that'll do. I like that bedevil too. You know, bedevil for for a different planeswalker. We don't we don't need to like bedevil this thing. We'll just legions on that. Play you. Uh, you and you go this way. You, you, and you go this way. I meant you go this way also. All right. Listen Is that a dragon? No. Not a construct dragon? Dragon construct? Dragon does not lose. Um, if you say so. All right, so I think Doom Whisper is going to get bounced. Let's see how you work by Teferi the Bouncer. This isn't a fight you can win. Uh, we might as well pay another two life, I think. See what else is going on. This might be a bad idea. Hmm. 
Innovation knows no bounds. I will return. Make them there are so many get rid of that token maker. Open mind. I made a lot of Vanifar decks, not course. not Tesa, though. There goes nothing. Unfortunately, I don't really think Tesa is strong enough for standard. I got Doom Whisperer back out here. Looking for like Nicobolus or something Medicate like that. And prepare. I've got time. Chandra. That kills Doom Whisperer. And no one is telling me what to do. It's pretty difficult for our opponent to deal with Doom Whisperer, but Chandra is a good way to do it. Alright, let's find Nickel Bolas. Whoa. There's a bunch of lands in a row. So that was five lands in a row. So put that one to, we put that one to the graveyard, then drew two others. And then those two. So that was five lands in a row. Let's see how many more we got. Seven lands in a row. After that bedevil. I mean, Thought Raider's not bad. You do better, though. There we go. Um... Alright, two more. Two more. <laughs> bye bye. See ya. soon as I think of one. Oh, I just realized I killed myself. <laughs> I just realized I killed myself. Yeah. 
I forgot about the Sarkin plus. I just wasn't, I was just, you know, concerned about the Sarkin minus. I was like, all right, well, now I'm going to have Bedazzle. Oh, I should have kept that Noxious Grasp. You will feel the lick of my to kill, you know, and kill Teferi here. Look I just forgot the about the plus. Because, see, Bedazzle, like, they were going to minus the Sarkin. I was going to have this kill the 4 4, and the Bedazzle was going to. Um, Finish off the Sarkin. <laughs> yeah, that's a punt. That's a punt. That's for sure. All right, threw that one away. Yep, mistakes were made. Let's see. All right, that card's out. So like Legion's End is really not the worst thing here because they make so many tokens. No, I don't want on where do you go. Scorn's really not that bad either. take out one night all right that was that was a little embarrassing but oh well moving on to game number two uh, focus on the next game the mana base is not great it's certainly certainly worse than what we normally play with I'd say that's the worst part of our deck is the mana base. But we're getting by without four mana Nicol Bolas pretty well. I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, blue. blue's kind of our... Blue's like our splash color here. The... Uh, the decks... This is like a red-white... Or sorry, a red-black kind of splashing blue deck. Just the trick for this. Cool, yeah, go find something good for me to Thought Erasure, thank you. Yeah, it's a good card to Thought Erasure. Yeah, Big Teferi is a is a big hole for Esper losing that.
One basic. I know, I know. There's no problem. Fire can't solve. Let us fight. <laughs> Magnificent. gonna be bad for you <laughs> listen to <laughs> watch this good thing is fry doesn't Fry like only hits Nicol Bolas in our deck. It doesn't hit anything else. Let's light it up. So our deck does a good job against Fry. Oh, uh, Kefnet. It's Kefnet also. All right. So we saw keeping Legion's End actually, you know, helped. Got rid of that dragon. I guess Ether Gust kind of does that too. But they can also just get a, a bunch of like artifact tokens because of Sahili, they start being really annoying. I mean, this Legion's end all those away. Let's run it back. All right, running it back. Well, that makes me want to duress the previous turn. Wasn't super worried about like any specific turn two play. Like as Kanta would have been the best thing they could have done, um, which that would have been bad. But I wanted to wait a turn for duress. And now, I know, 88 ways you know, now again, they, they grab whatever with action. Narset here. We can duress, duress away whatever they grab. Um, or I could go War Boss. No, let's, yeah, because if I go War Boss, they could have Clarion. Uh, that is some expensive stuff. Um... You know, Karma can bedevil.
Yeah, because like if the Dreadhorde Butcher dies anyway, we can like kill the Narset with. Then, like we don't really have things that make us draw multiple cards. All right, Grixis, coming through. Four and one. We are getting a final boss here on Rotation Proof Monday. Even with me throwing away that first game. Here we go, final boss time. Getting that final boss playlist going. Love seeing all the final boss emotes in the chat. <laughs> Five win dreams still alive. Oh no, Kaios, you're playing the Esper Mill from yesterday. You got paired against a 260 card deck. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's difficult to beat. I mean, you're just gonna have to mill yourself and like win with Jays. Wow, so many final bosses in the chat. That's the most final bosses I've ever seen. Yeah, the yeah this deck feels pretty good. Um, I think yeah, I think the the Field of the Dead deck is is definitely favored in this matchup you know, against my deck, especially without having, like, Blood Sun. Um, but this this feels pretty good. The mana base hasn't... It's it's kind of rough, but it hasn't been too bad. You know, it's been, it's been playable. Unlike this hand. What a mysterious temple. Cool. They probably will have some kind of green creature and or planeswalker to destroy. No, not another Field of the Dead. No, not Field of the Dead. Boo. Boo. That was a good draw. Do I grasp the grazer? I guess I do, right? Because, yeah, my next turn is just going to be war boss, then war boss. Oh. Another very good draw. I guess I need to grasp a rejuvenator so they don't have two re rejuvenators to to uh, block a war boss.
All right, the race is on. They have the Grazer that gets the jump block for them for a turn. Not sure if I'm just supposed to be scoring in the grazer there. Immediately. down to five. Ugh, three lands in a row. All right, so we kill Grazer, uh, attack out. These trade, they take six, go down to five, where I have two turn clock with Kefnet. If I kill the two, two, then this block, like they kill war boss block there, still take six. Probably this thing would be dead. I don't want them to be able to block my flyer. If I attack out, it's a two turn clock. If I don't, it's a three turn clock. Make it a two turn clock. Or I guess, no, it's three either way. Yeah, it's two more after this, but it's still gonna be two more after this either way. Go, go, Chandra, go. Sit back and watch it burn. <clears throat> so yeah, actually that that attack worked well of letting this two two get through and everything. So that can happen sometimes with Field of the Dead. Um, you know, they just drew like three or four lands. I think four, four lands like the last four turns. Besides the Grazer, like four lands and a Grazer. Maybe three lands and a Grazer, one of the two. But that just, that could, you know, certainly happens when half your deck are lands. So let's see, let's go get these Amortigos in again. I still think Bedeck Bedazzle is a little slow. In that kind of game, Bedazzle would have been really good to destroy a land and 
you know, destroy one of the field of the deads, like whenever we get to that part of the game. Um, let's see. We take out the fire artisans. We don't need any pizza. Don't need all these noxious grasps. Thirty seconds. That's probably Dreadhorde Butcher. That's probably the card I should take out. I have, yeah, Massacre Girl against the Nissa decks. So, like, your Llanowar Elf Paradise Druid Nissa decks that, like, make, you know, make a bunch of 3 threes with the lands. That's what I mostly want Massacre Girl for. Hey, Dr. Dents. We could, we could really use an untapped land on turn three where I can curve Erasure into Eco. Yep, our, our tap lands are hurting us. So I should probably lead with Temple. Uh, so if it's not an untapped land, I can put it to the bottom. Ugh. That's kind of rough, though. You know, like, we we shouldn't really be wanting to keep a land. But we have to. Um, this kills war boss. This can get rid of a bunch of tokens. Oh, come on. So main question is, do I throw knight out here and let them legions at night? Next turn. Yeah, might as well. So unfortunately, they do have a one field of the dead in play. So even if we eco, we only get the other three field of the deads. But another game where we got hurt by the all these tap lands. Ugh. I would have preferred to go ego than war boss and just wait on this night. So I'm guessing my opponent drew something else that they could play this turn. You know, like an Elvish Rejuvenator or something like that. So all the one field of the dead we have to deal with. But the others will be gone. Alright. 
Yeah, I was considering saying Cavalier Thorns, honestly. Gosh, there's three Cavalier Thorns. Four Cavalier Thorns. Uh, I feel like I should have said that. All right, so Cavalier Thorns, your rock. Those are the two to deal with, Risen Reef. That's it. No Krasis. No Agent of Treachery, thankfully. So we just got to deal with the five mana creatures. So knowing their list uh, definitely makes me want to play more Noxious Grasps. Uh, there's no Golos or anything like that. So if we lose this, we're going to be putting in more Noxious Grasps. Because they got, they're loaded up on the five mana cards. Yeah, yeah, definitely Field of the Dead is, like, for what we know right now, Field of the Dead may be the strongest thing post-rotation, honestly, for what we know right now. Uh, or, like, just what we have available. But we don't know what Throne of the Throne of Eldraine is going to bring to the table, of course. You know, before, if we would have talked about, like, think about, like, one set ago. We said, like, Esper Control and... I don't know, like, whatever else people played last set. Like, Vampires, Field of the Dead, like, those weren't even decks. And, you know, now they're very good decks. And so, like, Throne of Eldraine is going to have that effect also. It's going to, like, we're going to have new decks with Throne of Eldraine that don't exist right now. If you're interested, what? Cavalier gone? Oh, they have double. They only have two green. What a great tick up. So we'll see. Um, I'm I'm expecting anti field of the dead cards. I'm also expecting just like pushed, uh, you know, either tribal or synergy stuff. You know, like like how we just had like there were no elementals. Like like elementals obviously were not a thing at all before M20, and now they're really popular. I can see that kind of stuff happening. Oh yeah, Sultai Dread Horde. Yeah, that was a thing. Yep. Have been for you. <laughs> you have no weakness that I cannot exploit. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, we gotta be protecting this dragon god. That's what it's all about right now. No, there's never a top tier MS deck. Yeah, Wolf Tribal could certainly be a thing. Hey, Figment. Oh, good. We're just finishing up Grixis. We got three other sweet decks. You're not too late. All right, no, no Agent of Treachery or anything like that. And uh, that's it. I oh, I just I said four two. Oh, but we won. Whoops. There we go. Question is, what is Chandra Fire Artisan's purpose in the deck? Well, we need we need some good we need some like lunch, so we need to get some good pizzas. We got the Fire Artisan pizza maker in our deck. That's always a requirement. You gotta have tasty snacks. Always a requirement. I know, so used to dying to final boss. Um, a more serious answer though is our uh, four mana slot is just pretty weak after rotation. Um, so there's, there's not a lot of good options, but what Chandra can do is... So, like, I was I was worried about our mana, where I was worried about our mana base, and Chandra can 
just tick up and, you know, it gives you card advantage, but it can help you just find more lands. And so seeing Chandra can help out our mana situations. And we're also on the aggressive side with, or can be at times with, you know, Knight, Butcher, War Boss, where um, if people are attacking Chandra, that extra damage can matter. And so just just a card advantage engine at four mana slot. There, what really isn't better options too much. I honestly consider playing the other Chandra, um, the other four mana Chandra, the Novice Pyromancer, get a little bit of removal and mana in there, but went with a Fire Artisan. Fire Artisan's just a, a decent card. Nothing wrong with her. Drawn from Dreams is an option, but Drawn from I feel like Drawn from Dreams is just slower. And cost double blue. I wanted to, as you can see here, we're mostly red black. We're barely splashing blue. We do have the one Kefnet in there, um, which Kefnet was pretty good for us, honestly. The, the Kefnet was good. And the Chandra was just fine for us, too. Uh, the why, why would you think the plus on Chandra doesn't help us? We get to play an extra card every turn. I don't... I don't know why that doesn't help us. Like that, it certainly did throughout the games there too. Uh, we saw like the the Jeskai deck really struggled against Chandra. Um, there was a couple, like there wasn't a time, you know, even like the red deck, the Chandra really helped us against the red deck too. There honestly wasn't like a time that Chandra didn't help us when we played her. Does nothing the turn you played it. I mean, it depends if if you haven't played a land yet, you know, you can hit a land or if it's like late in the game, if you have extra mana, I can. I don't, I don't really like Spawn of Mayhem for this kind of, I think you have to be really aggressive for Spawn of Mayhem, um, but that could be a four drop, I suppose, uh, up there. But honestly, this deck worked out pretty well. I liked what we had here. I liked what we had going on. Uh, we did get to Carnage a couple of times. But Carnival Carnage is one of the weaker cards in our deck overall. But, um, but this the reason why I was playing this card is because my my four mana slot's pretty weak. So I thought, well, we could also have Carnage on the four mana slot, which we used a couple of times. You know, so this is basically a four drop of like deal, you know, my drop plus deal three to them. Basically, yeah, the other Nicol Bolas is ro rotating. Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, rotates. But yeah, I'd have to say I was pretty happy with this deck. Mana wasn't too bad. Uh, Lotus Field, I was not impressed with the Lotus Field. You know, I wanted to try this out. I would I would cut the Lotus Field moving forward um, for another land. I'm not sure what land. I don't know if I want, like the fourth dismal backwater or if we want a basic like maybe a basic mountain uh, basic mountain doesn't cast thought erasure or tyrant scorn but neither does lotus field right away maybe maybe just a basic mountain i don't know basic mountains kind of rough though for nickel bolus dragon god it may just be third swamp to be honest Yeah, honestly, it's probably just Third Swamp. Yeah, we still have 15 red sources. Yeah. It's probably just Third Swamp. <clears throat> I don't I don't want Blast Zone or a colorless land in this deck. Having a colorless land and then having your hand be like Thought Erasure, Tyrant Scorn, Bedevil, Dragon God. It's so rough, especially with Dragon God. Like, you, I just don't want colorless lands with Dragon God. Um, but there we go. So that's Grixis Midrange, Rotation Proof Grixis Midrange. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And if you like these Rotation Proof decks... I have the playlist with all of the other ones that we've been doing. We've been playing these for about a month on Mondays. And so we have around, there's somewhere around like 15 other rotation proof decks you can check out as well and see if there's anything that you really like. Uh, also recommend checking out these other ones we have later on today. I'm pretty excited about the Chandra Tribal that we're about to play as well. But uh, thank you so much for watching. 
and I'll see you for the next video.